What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today we're going to do a bit of a species spotlight and today's fish of choice is going to be the Red Devil. Alright guys, so the species of choice today is the Red Devil Cichlid. Um, and the reason I chose this fish is because I have one and I never was a big proponent of cichlid keeping. Um, until the past about a year or so. I uh, went to the Aquatic Experience in New Jersey and I was introduced to the Midas Cichlid or the Red Devil. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but I saw the personality of the fish that they had there and I really, really wanted one at that point. And I decided to set up a tank and go get a Red Devil. And I do not regret it. These fish are amazing. They have amazing personalities. And the first thing that people talk a lot about is why are they called the Red Devil, right? And it's called the Red Devil because of the behavior of the fish and the color. So generally the color of these fish, they're going to come in red or orange, a white or a mix. Like you see here, he is orange and white. And they are called the Red Devil because of the color and their aggression. So if I was to wave my hand back and forth in front of this tank, uh, he will become very aggressive because of the nature of these fish. So as an example here. He's very attentive to where I am and what's going on inside of his aquarium. And he will do the same thing to other fish in the aquarium as well. So they are very, very aggressive. So you have to be careful if you're going to choose other fish to put in with this guy. Now, before I said the Red Devil and the Midas Cichlid, um, a lot of people say they're the same fish. They are technically different. You have the uh, Amphilophius labiatus, which is the Red Devil, and you have the Amphilophius citronellus, which is the Midas Cichlid. They are different species, but are often confused and classified as the same fish because of how similar they are in appearance. Um, if you had two fish next to each other, to a person who is not an expert in those fish, they're not going to be able to tell the difference between them because they are that close. And because of this, there is a lot of breeding that happens between Midas and Red Devils and mixing them, right? And these fry are called medievals, right? So when you go to a pet store, PetSmart, Petco, your local fish store, anywhere like that, unless they have lineage showing that fish particularly, you can basically just consider it a medieval, right? Which is a combination of the Red Devil and the Midas. So technically he is a medieval, and because I can't prove lineage, that's essentially what he is. If you talk to anybody about it, they're gonna ask you if you have lineage or anything like that to prove he is a true Red Devil or Midas because of the, the differences being not very far apart. Um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, that's something I learned after I got him. Um, so, something that you guys might have learned there too. So, overall the care level is very easy for these fish. They don't require a lot. Um, and generally are very easy to take care of. They accept a lot of foods, um, and tank space isn't that hard to get for these guys, right? So um, they'll grow to approximately 12 inches, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on genetics, uh, quality of food, quality of water, quality of life, right? So it's going to depend on that, how large they grow. Uh, generally pH 6.5 to 7.5, so very run-of-the-mill, straight neutral water is perfect for these guys with a temperature of 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, like I said, they're a Central American cichlid, native to uh, Lake Nicaragua and Lake... Uh, Managua, I believe is the second one. Um, and the temperament, like I said, they're extremely aggressive. Uh, generally, they won't tolerate other fish in their tank. It's not your tank, it's their tank. Once you put them in there, that tank belongs to them. It no longer belongs to you. If you can get your hand in there without getting bit, I applaud you. Um, because you no longer own that. That is their property. Um, 
don't expect to be able to escape the tank. I have escaped this tank multiple times, and the next morning, it looks like this. I know you guys can't really see it, but most of these plants were up here behind that pot, and they are all now over here. All of the sand is pushed to the front and that end of the tank, and I don't know if you guys can actually see it, but you can see the light coming through right here. That's because it's bare bottom behind the sand because he has it all pushed to the side. Um, so don't really expect to be able to put a lot of stuff in there without him deciding where he wants it. Um, breeding. They will breed on flat stones. If you get a male and a female together and they do successfully breed, you're going to want to put a flat stone in there. They're going to lay the eggs and fertilize them on top of that flat stone and the male and female will protect them. Once the eggs hatch out, they are going to dig a pit somewhere in the aquarium. They're going to move all of the hatched fry into that pit and guard them until the uh, fry are free swimming, which is about five to seven days. And then the fry will free swim and everybody will be happy. Um, the parents may end up eating them, so you probably want to remove the fry after they're free swimming um, to avoid any of that. But it all depends on the tank size and what kind of line of sight blocks and things like that you have in there. So that's entirely up to you. Minimum tank size for these guys, 55 gallons. That's what he's in right now. Um, and when I say minimum 55 gallons, I'm talking by themselves. Very little stuff in there, very little plants, very little branches and sticks and driftwood, very little anything. You want as much space as you can provide for that fish as possible. And 55 gallon, with this fish getting full grown, you're probably going to want to upgrade to at least, at least a 75 to get that extra depth. Right? The plan for him is to go to a 125 when he grows out a little bit more, uh, but for right now he's in a 55 and he's doing very, very well. Just keep up on your water changes and things like that and keep the parameters in check and you will be fine. Um, tank mates, any other large cichlid, maybe, right? So there is very slim chance that he's going to get along with other fish. Um, so you want to make sure that any other fish that you do get are large enough or have enough aggression, right? Or have enough fish, a multiple amount with maybe some dither fish or stuff like that, to be able to spread the aggression out so he doesn't bully everybody um, to the point of killing them. So recently I met a gentleman who had a 730 gallon aquarium and I have a little 10 second clip. I'll play that right here. And if you notice in that aquarium, he has a red devil that's about 12 inches in there, maybe a little bit less, 10 to 12 inches in that range. And you'll see the, there's a big Paku in there. The Paku's 24 to 28 inches. The red tail cat's about two feet long. There's a big green terror in there. There's a lot of big cichlids in there. And the green terror ran that tank until the red devil was added. Once the red devil was added, all the other fish hide in the corners and he basically runs that tank. So it doesn't matter what the fish is, he's the boss. So tank mates, you might be able to get away with something, but you really gotta know what you're doing. Um, as far as food, they'll accept almost anything. Uh, large pellets, small pellets. I feed mine the Omega-1 goldfish pellets because they've got good quality. Um, I feed him a lot of shrimp and I feed him a lot of tilapia. You're going to want a large protein in their diet because they are a predator. Um, so large amounts of protein and they will do well for you. As you can see, his color is very bright and vibrant and he's very active and healthy, right? Um, so he's doing very well based off of what I'm feeding him. As far as gender differences, females are generally going to be a little bit smaller and the males are going to be a little bit larger. Um, and the males are also going to get a hump on their forehead as they mature. And as far as being able to sex them from a young age, uh, you're going to have to vent to them, right? So you don't have to do anything other than holding the fish and looking at them. The male is basically, if you look at their vent, they're gonna have two dots, one above the other. And the female is going to have a dot on top and what looks like a U shape underneath it. 
um, and that's how you can determine the males versus females. Um, and as far as that, that's pretty much it for the species information. Now, one other thing that if you keep your red devil alone in a tank, like mine's alone in a 55 gallon, something you don't see a lot when you have them mixed in with other big cichlids and stuff like that in big predator tanks is, I don't know if you guys can see it, but on his dorsal fin and his anal fin, they will start to get streamers on the tips of their fins. And that's not something that you normally see with uh, red devils and Midas cichlids like that, unless they're alone. So when they're alone, they're going to develop amazing personalities, they're going to develop those streamers, and they're going to be super personable. Just be careful sticking your hand inside that tank, guys, because they will grab a hold of you. Um, but that's basically it for the species spotlight of the red devil and the Midas cichlid, I guess, because they're basically the same fish. Um, so thank you guys for watching Trafish Aquatics. If you guys like any of the products that I use in any of my videos or have here in the fish room, go ahead and check the links down below in the description. Most of them are there. Go ahead and buy them for yourself. Use them. They work good for me, so they should work good for you too. Um, but aside from that, I will see you guys in the next video.